Hi everybody, welcome back to Daisy, and welcome back to another one of my beginner's guides to playing Daisy on console, PlayStation, and Xbox in 2022. A kind of an update of all the other video guides I've done with a specific slant towards consoles and the um, specific nuances that you've got to get your head around when especially you're dealing with your inventory on console. Now, of course, everything I'm talking about here applies to PC as well, but I wanted to kind of talk about uh, console and talk in terms of the controls of the consoles um, because when you're starting on console, um, it can be very, very challenging. And this video is for, for new players to Daisy. Players, you've just started playing and you're like, I like the look of Daisy. I watch streams of Daisy or videos of Daisy and I think it looks amazing. And I love the stories people tell but to be honest I haven't got a clue how to survive I haven't got a clue what I'm doing so I've created this custom area on one of my Xbox servers um, where my plan is to gradually expand it with lots of kind of beginners stuff that I can talk about so without further ado let's get cracking and let's talk about food now when you're wandering around in Daisy to start off with, you'll probably pick up some canned goods and you'll find these in, in houses, in villages and towns. Let me put my knife away. And you'll uh, pick one up with the X key. Uh, you can put it into your hands with X button. Sorry, on uh, Xbox, that would be square on PlayStation. Press and hold. Uh, it will go straight into your hands. So you can see it's in my hands there. And you'll be like, okay, how do... Uh, okay, I've got it in my hand. Um, how do I... Um, how do I eat it? I can punch with it, which isn't a good idea anymore, um, but how do I eat it? And unless the can is a can that can be opened by hand, like a sardines can, um, you've got to open it with a tool. Now, although the best tool to open it is a can opener, um, any sharp tools will open um, cans as well. Uh, everything from knives to screwdrivers to um, I think even things like um, pickaxes will and axes will open a can. However, which tool you choose will um, control how much food is left in the can after you've opened it. So if you open up a can with a um, can opener, you'll have all the food that's inside. If you open up a can with a screwdriver, you'll have less food. Because imagine you would when you're in real life. If you smashed open a can with an axe, there's not going to be that much food inside. So if we want to open it, we can... We can take the can into our hands and this is where it's tricky on console so in your inventory screen you use your shoulder buttons you know the ones above the triggers you tap them to move between your equipment on the right the stuff that's kind of you've got on your body your hands the one that's in the middle and what's in the vicinity around you to your left so you kind of go backwards and forwards and then when you're in that section so i'm on the right now with my equipment i can use my d-pad to go up and down through the stuff or if i want to go quicker i can use my triggers right trigger to go down now if you can't see something like um you can't see inside your bag so let's say for example let's close up my jacket you see how now you're like well where, where's the stuff that's meant to be inside my 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 jacket it's because my jacket is the inventory is closed if you look on the little arrows next to the stuff here you, you'll see that some point up and some point down if it's pointing down you won't be able to see into it so you Click in your left, uh, your right stick, sorry, and that will then open it up. See it opening up and closing there? And then you can use your D-pad to go down. Now, the reason why I tell you this is sometimes, when you, especially when you've got like a, a big bag with lots of stuff in it, the inventory can kind of glitch out a little bit, and you'll find that the stuff you want to access will be off the bottom of the screen, and you won't be able to see it properly to access it. If that happens, just close up some of your inventory so that all of it is um, on the screen like that. So a little little tip there for inventory management. So what we do now is we can go down, and we find where the um, can is, so you can see the can opener is there. So I've just got my cursor over. You see how the can opener is now highlighted? And then if you look in the bottom right corner, it says B to combine, or it would be circle on PlayStation. And this is the core of how you work with things in DZ. You normally have something in your hand, and then something in your backpack or your trousers or your jacket. And then you combine the two. So we press B and then it will flick to the, we're in the normal screen now, like that. And you'll see the tool tip has now come up, RT, open, can, hold. So we press RT, right trigger, and it will then open the can, like so. And once the can is opened, you'll see in the bottom left hand corner, it now says canned peaches. 
and right trigger to eat. So we can hold right trigger and we are enjoying a lovely nutritional um, meal of peaches. Mm, yum, 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 yum. Right, okay, so that's that's enough of that. So let's uh, let's drop them. So we can press and hold um, X to drop it onto the floor, or that would be press and hold square on PlayStation. So so we've dropped that. Um, now let's just show you something else as well. So if we have, for example, the can opener in our hands, and then we go, we kind of hover the center of our screen over an object you can see i then get an option to open it that way as well so i haven't actually picked up the can but i can still open it like that so there's lots of ways to um, um interact with things so let's drop that can opener because i've always got one um, now also in terms of food you'll find these things around the environment these fall off trees, obviously apples and pears and things like that. And you'll find mushrooms in uh, forests or around um, the hay bales in the middle of fields. Now, these are good to eat as long as they're not rotten. So to see whether they're rotten or not, just go over to the vicinity and just highlight the food. Wait for the little box and this just says raw. So we can put that into our hand by tapping X or we can... Um, hold sorry tapping a or pressing x on playstation and once we've got that in hand we can then eat a nice apple so if, if it says it's rotten don't eat it if it says it's dried that's good it just means it's going to last um, a bit longer and we can eat mushrooms as well there are no poisonous mushrooms in daisy as of yet so what i've got here is we've got a couple of examples of knives there's a kitchen knife there there's a steak knife there there's a screwdriver now the knife have and finding a knife is probably the most important thing you can find early game because it enables you to do so many things however if you're lucky enough to find a cup a stone um or two a small stone let's just put that into my hand what you can then do if you find another one you can combine the two so as you can see so i've got a stone in my hand so if i hover the center of my screen over this other stone it'll say craft a stone knife or if i put the stone in my backpack by um holding uh, going to the vicinity and then pressing x on uh, xbox or square on playstation to put it into my backpack and then we go over to my backpack and then just hover my cursor over the stone you'll see now if you can bottom right corner it says combine so we press b and then it says craft stone knife hold so press right trigger and that is going to craft that if you're wondering how i'm going in and out of third person that is double click on the right stick double click it in and there, if we look on the floor now, we should see a stone knife. Now, that's another thing to watch out for. Often when you craft something in Daisy, the, the, the item that ends up crafting will end up on the floor. So I can press A to put it in my hands. That would be X on um, PlayStation. And now we have, can you see it? I've got a nice stone knife. Now, the stone knife, you see, can open cans as well. And the stone knife can do lots of things we can skin and quarter hens we can very very importantly craft rags and we're going to be talking about that in in just a second so stone knives are good at the moment in the game they're not actually that many stones i mean you find stones generally along river uh, beds or dried up river beds and sometimes and along um stone paths um and you'll find them along the beach but there's not that many of them which is a shame but hopefully the devs will change the game so that there are more of them so you can craft them now they don't last very long now, what else have we got here? Now, drinking stuff. Uh, very, very important. It's very easy to get ill from uh, drinking and eating in Daisy. So, for example, if we ate a mushroom that was rotten or an apple that was rotten, um, we would get ill. Um, if we just picked up a bottle of water or a canteen and started drinking it, we would probably get ill as well. We'd probably get cholera because the water that is in these bottles, we don't know if it's gone off or not yet. So whenever you come across a, a bottle of water, you wanna press and hold X on, on Xbox or press and hold square on PlayStation and put it into your hand. There you go, see I've got it in my hand. And then you want to look down straight away. And if you look in the bottom left hand corner, it says uh, right trigger, empty it. And you want to empty it out. Do not drink, unless you're incredibly desperate. You know, you're about to die of dehydration. I mean, if you look in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen, you see I've got my hydration uh, little bottle. I've got my little apple, which is my food. My temperature is the thermometer, and then my blood. So they're all good. Well, even when you're down in the red, it takes a long time to die. 
all right now it's good so don't risk drinking dirty water now the, the only places you'll get clean water are from water pumps like this and you can either drink from a water pump by um, just pressing and hold X on Xbox or Square on PlayStation. But the quickest way is to actually fill up a water bottle. So you kind of look at the pump. There we go. And then we can fill up the water bottle. This is especially important on PVE servers or normal servers where someone can kill you because people hang around water pumps. So you then run off, find somewhere safe, and then you could uh, right trigger and you can... Uh, drink your water that way the other thing you can do you can collect water from streams and places like that but what you'll want to do is you'll want to um, clean the water with chlorine tablets you see there those, those chlorine tablets so again we've got a bottle of water in our hands so it's, it's saying look you can right trigger purify or i could pick up the um, chlorine tablets put them into my backpack uh, where have they gone Oh, they're in my hand, apologies. <laughs> Let's put them into my backpack. Pick up the water. Where's the water bottle gone? There we go, two hands, A. Eh? Ah, this is an interesting bug you sometimes get. So you try and put stuff into your hands and it won't go into your hands. If that's the case, what you can do is press and hold A, okay, and then use your right trigger to move it across. So you press hold A and use your, sorry, your right shoulder button above your trigger to move it across. So let's move away from all this stuff. So now I've got the bottle in my hand. So I can, I can go up to my um, chlorine tablets and you see it says, if you look at the bottom corner, it says combine. So we press B, then we get the option to purify and hold. So th this extra step that you need to take is quite interesting in Daisy because often in games you would just have combine, you'd press B and it would do it, but you've actually got to then do the action as well in Daisy. So that water is now um, safe to drink. Now we've got a little dead uh, hen here, haven't we? Now, killing animals, hens, cow, um, cows, wolves, bears, if you're, you're lucky, if you cut them up, you can get food out of them. Um, and then you can cook the food which we're going to talk about in a minute however you must be careful when you're cutting stuff up about your hands so as you can see my character's actually got gloves on so what we're going to do we're going to take my gloves off and we're going to um, grab a knife oh not a can I don't want the can so we grab a knife and we're going to go up to the chicken. If you look on the screen, it says right trigger, skin and quarter. So we're going to cut up this hen, even though it's on the table, we're bending over to do it. And this will then give us the stuff we need, which is, if we look on the ground, we've got some chicken steak, which we could take. But if you look at the hands of my character, see how they're all bloody. Now, if I was to then eat with these hands, I would probably get food poisoning. I would probably get ill, which is not good. So... When you're going to cut something up, um, use um, have gloves on. Or if you do get bloody hands and you notice you've got bloody hands, what you want to do is you can go up to water bottle and you can take that to your hands. And then if you see in the bottom left hand corner, it says wash hands, right trigger. So I could wash my hands with the water from the water bowl. doesn't matter if it's dirty water. Or if you go up to water pump, you see it says wash hands X. So I just press X. My character's going to wash your hands. Or you can go up to rivers, or I think even in the sea you can wash your hands. So you've now look at my character's hands. They are now clean. So that's very, very important. Now, if you do get ill um, from food poisoning, you'll want to have some medicine. And really, uh, I think food poisoning is tetracycline, which is the antibiotics. Tetracycline tends to... Um, heal you from from most stuff and you'll find this in hospitals or in those those clinics those uh, blue build i think they're blue buildings aren't they um that have the doctors and nurses in them very very rare but very very useful now i've put the crowbar this just a, that's an example of something that will open cans as well and i think it can cut up chickens with a crowbar as well but you end, you don't end up with much left when you do that sort of thing so that's really food so hopefully you get the idea that you've got to use tools to open cans to drink. Some of the cans you don't need to, but lots of them you do. Right, so let's go to the next most important thing, which are wounds and treating wounds and hopefully not getting um, iller from having a wound. So, you know, you're going to come up against some zombies. They're going to cut you and you're going to bleed. 
So it's very important that you have uh, bandages or probably rags. Now, rags, when, when you start off, you'll have some rags in your inventory, but you make rags from cutting up clothes. So I've put this dress here so you could just see. So I've got a knife in my hand, so it's automatically saying right trigger to craft the rags. So let's just hold that and let's craft some rags. Dumpty, 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 dum. And the, the rags will then be on the ground. Here we go. So let's find them. Now, so let's put these away. So let's pick up some rags. Now, when you, when you find rags or you pick them up, you want to look at them um, and you want to see if they're disinfected. If your rags are not disinfected when you use them, um, you you will heal your cut, but you will then get blood poisoning, or you've got a high chance of getting blood poisoning. That's why it's very important, as soon as you can, find something like disinfected and spray, or alcoholic tincture, um, or the like, uh, or uh, iodine tincture, these bottles here. You see them? And then, you see, see it's giving me the option to disinfect the bandages I've got in my hand. So let's, let's disinfect these bandages by pressing and holding right trigger. Right, so now if we look at the rags, you'll see it says disinfected at the top of the screen. Very, very important. So if I get a cut and I heal myself with uh, that rag. Now, if you are bleeding, you get the visual indication that you're bleeding. You'll see blood coming off your character. And in the bottom right corner, it will give you the bleeding eye, uh, icon as well. It's very, very important as well is if you do see yourself bleeding that you heal yourself with a bandage before it automatically heals. So if you've just got a one cut, you won't, a one cut, you won't keep bleeding and bleeding and bleeding. Eventually you will stop bleeding. However, if you haven't healed yourself with a disinfected bandage or a disinfected rag, there's a good chance you're gonna end up with blood poisoning. So make sure you heal yourself from bleeding. Now, if, if you're lucky, you'll heal yourself from bleeding. So you'll automatically heal from bleeding, you know, it will scab over kind of thing. Um, and if you're lucky, you'll re you'll recognise that. And if you're really lucky, you'll have some iodine tincture in your backpack, and you can use that to then treat yourself quickly to st treat the wound, so you don't get um, don't get blood poisoning. If you don't, your character will start sweating, they'll start making a funny noise, and you'll have blood poisoning. And blood poisoning is really nasty. And again, that's where tetracycline can come in as well. So if you've got some tetracycline, you can pop a pill. Um, if you pop a pill, in fact, let's um. Let's take some pills, I'll show you. So let's put those in the middle. In fact, I'm running out of it. Let's drop the rags. Let's go down to my touch cycling. Press A on Xbox, or that would be X on um, PlayStation to put it in my hand. And if you look in the bottom left corner, it says R trigger to eat. So let's eat a touch cycling. Then if you look uh, in the bottom right corner, you see I've now got a little pill icon. So if I was ill from blood poisoning or, or anything else, take the touch cycling. You'd wait. For, there's no point eating lots of pills. You know, one will do, and then you wait for the pill icon to go, and then you take another one. And normally, two, do, two to three doses of tetracycline will, will cure most things. Now, there are other medicines you can get as well. There's lots of ones like charcoal is a classic one. Charcoal, um, actually, charcoal is good for food poisoning if you eat rotten stuff. But again. Big, big bit of advice with Daisy is this, the subjects we're covering here is, is really just the tip of the iceberg. So g go on YouTube and search, especially for Wobo. He does some amazing videos. And the thing you want to learn about, do a search for. So, you know, medicine in Daisy. And when you find the video on YouTube, just look at the date. And just bear in mind, if it's quite old, if it's like 2017, 2018 or before, the, 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 it might not be up to date. Um, now, multivitamins. Multivitamins are really important. If you can find some multivitamins, just pop them regularly, and they help to keep your immune system strong, um, which means that you're less likely to get ill from um, food poisoning. Being cold and wet is a classic thing that you can get, you know, get get ill from. If you're near another player, for example, who's like got a cold and they're coughing and spluttering, um, there's a chances that you'll get ill. If they drink from a bottle and pass it to you um, and you drink from it, you get ill. So having vitamins and, and popping a vitamin every now and again to, to stay strong um, is, is highly, uh, highly advisable. Now, here we go. So what we've got here is, so this is the splint. Um, hardcore survivalists are recommended to have a splint in their backpack at all times. So if you 
you can break your legs you can fracture your legs in daisy um, and that's really from falling from a high place or falling from low places but lots of times and your legs will will eventually just just snap um, and you won't be able to get up you'll keep falling over and it can be a death sentence if there's if there's zombies or other players around so you need to need to make a splint now you make splints from he says looking at his notes from four rags and two sticks so let's have a look at how we do that so i've probably got some rags already in my backpack have i and you can make it from bandages as well we haven't so so let's pick up these rags so we've got the rags and uh, how many sticks we got so there's two sticks there so let's take these sticks so let's take that stick with the x button and what we're going to do now you see how they're in my backpack so what we're going to do here is we're going to combine the sticks to put them in a pile um, so if i put the sticks in my hand with a one of them and then i go over the other one and press b to combine they're now in a pile see it says two in the bottom right hand corner below short stick so i can now put them back in my inventory with x and they'll be in a pile of two so now if i put the rags in my hand by pressing um, a on xbox or that would be x on playstation if i now hold um, my cursor over the pile of two sticks and press b to combine them or, or that would be the circle button on playstation you'll see we now have some recipes so it says a uh, short stick uh, craft torch or R tr right trigger to, to go to the next one. So craft fireplace, craft splint is now there. So if we now press and hold right trigger, we will now make the splint. So you see how, because it needed two sticks to do this and the sticks were separate in our inventory, we needed to combine the sticks to put them in a pile before we could do it. And now what we should see is on the floor, there is a splint. And there we go, so we've got a splint in our hand. Um, I don't think, yeah, you, unless you've got a broken leg, you can't apply the splint, but that would be a good thing to have in your backpack. It, it depends how careful you are, to be honest. I, I can't remember the last time I broke my leg. You can get a broken leg from being shot, though. Um, so I guess if you're a hardcore PvPer, it might be worth having a, a splint in. Or if you're running with other players as well, having a splint. So at least one of you's got a splint so you can apply it to other people. Right quick look at um items here uh, for fixing uh, your clothes and bags so here we've got so sewing kits duct tape le and leather sewing kits and the tire repair kit so the stuff you're you're wearing will wear over time and in fact it might be worn when you pick it up um and so if for example let's pick up the uh let's just take the sewing kit so let's say, for example, my uh, jacket had become worn. If we look at it now, uh, it says, uh, if you look up in the middle at the top, it says hunter jacket pristine. But if it was worn or damaged, I could use my D-pad to go to the um, sewing kit. See, I've highlighted the sewing kit now on the right hand side. And if my jacket was damaged with the jacket in my hand, I could press B on Xbox or circle on PlayStation and it would combine the two and i would then have the option to repair my jacket and for each cycle it will go from like damaged to badly damaged to damaged from damaged to worn you can't get any better than worn um now it's important you keep an eye on your uh, clothes and your gear because if they go to ruined that's it if you take them off um you're done then um that you won't be able to put them back on um and so you can use sewing kit on clothes um, duct tape works on clothes um, i think leather sewing kit works on bags and the tire repair kit works on nbc stuff so what you should be doing as, you, as you're going around you know exploring daisy just go up to the top where your equipment is with your d-pad and just have a look right it's hunter vest is still pristine jacket is still pristine trousers uh, pants are still pristine and if they start going down and you've got the stuff to repair them repair them or if you come across other stuff so you come across another jacket um you know swap it out especially shoes shoes are very dangerous if shoes go ruined you'll start to bleed with you through your feet um which is very bad and, and sometimes you won't figure out why you're bleeding through your feet um so that's another reason to have a spare pair of shoes on you the other thing we'll talk about while we're here is insulation churnerus and livonia in daisy are very cold and so that's why it's important to have have good gear on so if we look at the hunter jacket it says best insulation so it's great 
and then we've got the hunter trousers which are best insulation even things like your um backpack give you some insulation um and so you know put that balaclava on put that woolly hat on put those gloves on put those good shoes on and as you're going around you may find you had something that was say best insulation like my hunter jacket but as it gets damaged or it's damp it won't have as good insulation and if you find something that's better put it on other good examples are things like fireman's jackets and trousers they're very good they're very good at dealing with dampness as well um keeping that insulation when they're wet so managing your clothes keeping an eye on them keeping them repaired and swapping over to fresh clothes um the, the only things i would recommend you keep as a spare in your backpack are shoes i always have a spare pair of shoes because if you're caught in the middle of nowhere with shoes that have gone ruined that's it you, you might as well kill yourself because you, you're going to be bleeding through your feet all the time so i think we can repair shoes with duct tape as well so that's the thing to think about in terms of those things now here's an example of some shoes as well i just wanted to show you how to dry stuff out as well so let's see if I can do this. So here's a cooking pot, which I think, let's put some water in this cooking pot. Uh, let's fill it up. Bum, bum, bum. But we're not gonna use it for cooking. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna, oh, oh brilliant, it's got a hat in it already. Not quite sure why the beanie's in there, <laughs> but we've got a hat in it. So let me just drop the cooking pot. Okay, so as you can see, there's there's some clothing in, in the cooking pot. But the reason why I've done this is because I want you to see that, oh, it's damp. Oh. I wanted it to be wet. Oh, it's not wet enough. Um, let's see if we can do it with this ski mask so let's put the ski mask inside the cooking pot let's let it get wet for a little bit no it hasn't got wet okay so <laughs> if you're out in the rain or you go swimming um, your stuff will get soaked it will get wet and if that's the case what you need to do is put the item in your hand and if it's a if it's a material item like a ski mask or, or a jacket or some trousers or a woolen hat or something you'll see uh, you'll get the tool tip to wring it out so then you press and hold the right trigger and you can you can wring it out that's what i was hoping to be able to do with this, this by putting stuff in the, the cooking pot but it hasn't given me that option which is a bit of a pain um and that's very important so your stuff will go from soaked to wet or or sorry go from soak to damp which means that it will that its level of insulation will go up it won't be great but it'd be better than being soaked which means you're less likely to get ill um, and your temperature to drop okay so that didn't quite work right but hopefully you get the idea um also i want to talk about here we go so we've got some spare boots here so you see we've got hiking boots and sneakers consider if you're wearing hiking boots or combat boots or heavy boots consider having uh, your spare pair of shoes as things like sneakers or trainers you know the, the the smaller boots the reason for this is that zombies react to sound and having a nice pair of sneakers on when you're when you're trying to be sneaky um, when you're trying to be stealthy around zombies they make a lot less sound than the big clunking boots so you slip them on when you're going into a town and you'll be less likely to be heard Heat packs. Heat packs are cool. Um, let's put them in our hand. Heat pack, you can have it in your hand, like I've got it here. And you see in the bottom left hand corner, it says right, right uh, trigger to activate. So we just activate it. And then you want to put that in something like your vest or your trousers. So can I go over? There we go. And that will warm your character for a period of time. Um, they don't last that long. And eventually, it will uh, it will dissipate. Um, while we're here, let's talk about the uh, wheel as well. So if you press and hold your top right shoulder button, you'll get the quick access wheel, like I've got here. Uh, let's do it over there so you can see it better. Now, the the number of points on your wheel depend on the gear you're wearing. So if you're wearing a backpack and a, a, a vest and trousers and you know a jacket, you'll have more options to do stuff. Um, and this enables you to quickly access things so I can quickly access my vitamins or my gun like this to put things onto the wheel 
just go over them in your inventory using your d-pad and then press and hold in your left stick so click it in keep it hold in and then use your right stick to move around to where you want it to be and then you press a on xbox or x on playstation and that will then put that particular item there so you can now have quick access to your bacon for eating it which is uh, which is nice mm, nice bacon yes lovely jubbly okay a couple of other items we have here we have one of the most important things in daisy the compass so here we have a compass there's this brass compass and you get the orienteering compass if you've got a big screen you might well be able to see we can just about see the letters on the compass as i turn it but if you press right trigger opens up and we can kind of see where we're meant to be going and you can kind of hold it up i think that's kind of the really idea if you want to be very accurate about the direction you are heading in and if you are using the i survive map on your phone or laptop or your pc you can look at um, town names um, you can wander around in daisy find the town name um, where you are using looking at the road signs and then you can work out which direction we want to go in your compass if you want to go a little bit more hardcore um, you can find a tourist map and then you can right trigger to open up these the performance of these isn't brilliant especially on xbox ones and playstation 4s i mean this is on my xbox series s as you can see um it's not that great they don't tell you where they are uh sorry they don't tell you where you are um and they're a bit clunky to to say to say the least um yeah but they're a bit of fun a bit of fun just put that way let's drop that we don't really need that okay so one of the next most important things is eating and cooking food. So that's what we're going to talk about now. So we've got a selection of different things here. We've got a nice dead hen there that we can use. Now, there's a couple of ways you can you can cook food. Well, I say a couple of ways. There's lots of ways you can cook food in Daisy. You could find a gas stove. And if you, if you combine the gas stove with the small gas canister and you have a pot and you fill the pot with water, you can put the pot on top of the gas stove and put food inside the pot and then you can cook it. That's one way. However, the most common way you're going to be cooking food is on a fireplace that you either make yourself outside or you'll go into a building and you'll find a fireplace and you'll use that. So let's do the most common one first, which is making a fire um, outside. So maybe you found some food or you found a chicken, you know, a hen, or you've killed a pig and you're like, right, I want to cook this baby. Um, now, the, the, there's lots of different fuel you can use. You can make a fire out of sticks. You can make a fire out of firewood. So if you cut down a tree with an axe um, and you get logs, you can cut the logs up to firewood or firewood will naturally drop off. Um, and you'll need some kindling and that kindling can be bark, um, uh, from trees or it could be rags or it could be bandages or it could be paper from a book all these things will will, will create the fire um, and then you can light it with matches um, lighter or you can make a um, a hand drill which I thought I had done uh, is there a hand drill here no so we'll look at making a hand drill as well in a second okay so let's make a basic fire so what we'll do we, we're going to take some sticks so we're going to press X on Xbox. Um, it would be square on PlayStation. We're just going to put them in our backpack like so. And then we're going to pick up some... Uh, so light, light bark or bark you get from trees. So you go up to a tree with your knife in your hand and you can cut bark off. Um, or again, you could use rags. So let's take some of that. And then what all we need to do is we just need to put a stick into our hand and then highlight the bark... And then you see it says B to combine, or it would be circle on PlayStation. And then you see it says craft fireplace, hold. So we press and hold right trigger, and we're going to craft a simple fireplace. Dumpty, 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 dum. Now the fireplace is now on the ground. Now, especially if you're in the countryside, the fireplaces can be really difficult to see. Um, we can pick it up as well, and we can put it somewhere else. Let's put it down. Put it down here. So right trigger to hold. Now, what we can do, if we press our um, inventory button, uh, in fact, I tell you what, let's move away a little bit so we haven't got all this other stuff around us. Put that down there. Now, 
if we look at uh, in the vicinity we can see the fireplace um and if we scroll down you can say we can add a tripod to a fireplace and then a cooking pot you can actually add stones to fireplace as well to make it better and then we see fuel so as far as fuel goes at the moment we've only got one stick in it if we go to kindling we've only got one piece of kindling so what you can do is if you go to your inventory if you press and hold a on xbox or that would be x on playstation we can drag this over using our uh, shoulder buttons use our triggers to go down to fuel and then go over to there and drop that and see we've added a little bit more or we could go over and we could pick up say a piece of firewood put it into our hands go up to the fire and we should see the thing to so it says right trigger attach so we've attached that so it's you can see it's sort of taking uh, place now isn't it now to light it uh what have we got here we go so we've got some matches and if you've got some matches in your hand, you'll just get the ignite button. Now, if you're inside, uh, you won't be able to light fires. If it's raining, you won't be able to light fires. I think if it's too windy as well, you can't light fires. But what we're going to do is we're going to make a um, drill kit. Because, again, early on in the game, you probably won't have any matches. You won't have a lighter. You can also light fires with road flares as well. All right, there we go. There, there we go. Hand drill kit. So hand drill kits are really important. So the hand drill kit bit of a funny name but it's like what boy scouts would use you know when you you get a piece of wood and you get a stick and you 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 spin the stick on the piece of wood and that that lights so in order to to make one of those we need a stick and then we need uh some bark again you get bark from a tree so let's have a look so there is a stick so let's pick up the stick um let's pick up the bark and let's go over here and then so we've got a short stick in our hand if we go in our inventory go to the bark press b to combine see it says craft fireplace first we don't want that so we tap right trigger craft hand drill kit so right trigger to hold and that will then drop that on the floor so then if we bring up there's the hand drill kit on the floor put that in our hands go over to our fire press and hold right trigger and this will then light the fire So, fantastic. So now we need to cook our stuff. So what we need to do, we need a spit. So you take your stick and you'll need a knife. This is why knives are so important. And we combine the two. And if you see, it says sharpen with the right trigger. So we press right trigger. And without this, you can't cook food. There we go. So now on the floor, is a, a sharpened stick now i'm just gonna y press y to equip that or that would be triangle on playstation that puts it on my shoulder and then when, when what we're going to do is we're going to put a grab a knife and we're going to cut this chicken up so i've just stood near the chicken with my uh, the dead chicken <laughs> with my knife there we go so if i now put the sharp stick into my hand you see it's got a space for food down there. So now I can take a piece of chicken steak and I can press A to... Oop, no, I don't. Sorry. Let's put that back on the floor. There's my stick. Let's press A to put the uh, stick into my hand. If we press A and hold on the chicken steak and then press right top shoulder button and then down on the D-pad, that will then attach that. So you, can you uh, just come over here? So you see I've got the piece of chicken on the end of my stick. And then we can come down here and now it's we're near the fire it says right trigger to roast there we go and we are cooking our chicken and when that um circle goes all the way around the chicken will be cooked uh, if you keep going it'll eventually burn now once you've cooked the chicken um let it cool down a bit before you eat it if it's really cold and you've got lots of chicken, you can put the chicken while it's hot into your trousers or your jacket and it will warm you up as well. So that, that's pretty cool. It will go cold and food does go off and food does rot. Um, so if you've got food, you know, eat it. And as far as eating goes in Daisy, at the moment anyway, you're always best to eat little and often. 
so don't try and eat like a whole sheep at once you used to be able to do that um what, <laughs> but what will happen now is your 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 stomach will get full um so what you do now is you eat a little bit um, until your stomach gets full when you get that stomach full sign in the bottom right corner so if you get the <laughs> we're on the subject if you get the stomach full sign in the bottom right corner it looks like a kind of a kidney um, stop eating straight away otherwise you'll be stick sick so we go to the middle go to the sharpened stick highlight the meat and then we can press x to put it on our inventory put the sharpened stick on our shoulder again get that meat so it's 90 degrees so we would wait for that to cool a little bit and then we could uh, we could eat stuff right there we go i'm just going to take a quick break and then we're going to do a fire inside the house now Hmm, that was a nice bacon sandwich. So what we're going to do next is we're going to look at how you can start a fire inside a building because these fires uh, offer you faster options for cooking because they have more slots for cooking. And also you can dry food as well. What can be a bit confusing though, as you approach a fire and you look at it, there's nothing, it doesn't say it's a fire, there's nowhere to put the food. But what you need to do is you need to have something that we would use to... Um, fuel the fire in your hand so if I take these rags into my hand which we can use for kindling we could use paper we could use um, bark um, we could have some firewood in our hands we could have some sticks in our hands watch see you get the right trigger place option come up see that right trigger place and as soon as we put that thing in there which you can kind of just see if we go to our inventory options we can see the fireplace has now appeared which means we can now add stuff to the fireplace. In the kindling section down there on the bottom left-hand corner, you can see um, we've got a paper. So here's some here's some firewood that I prepared earlier. So if I press and hold uh, A on Xbox, that would be X on PlayStation, I, and then uh, press my right trigger to come down, I can now come down to the fuel section and put that wood in the fuel section like so. Okay, so that's quite a lot. So that's quite a lot of fuel now. And you'll notice we've got a grid. Then if we have a look here inside the fireplace, you see we have four smoking slots and two cooking. So smoking and drying are the same thing. Um, and roasting is, is sort of the same thing. So what we can do is if we go over here, we can pick up, I don't know, these apple, pear. There's some fat. Um, there's some pumpkin slices and there's some chicken. So what we could do is we could come in and then using the method of pressing and holding A or on our PlayStation or X on our, our A on our Xbox or um, X on our PlayStation, press and hold that and then press the uh, top left bumper to come across and then press the right trigger to come down. There we go. So I've put some pumpkins to be cooked, pumpkin skins. Let's, um, oh look, that meat's gone off already. Show you how fast the meat goes off. Oop, put that back on. So let's move that chicken to the smoking section. Let's smoke that pear or dry that pear. Let's cook this fat. Fat's really good, or lard they call it. Um, let's drop that piece of rotten meat so we don't accidentally eat it. And then let us come out of here and let's go and get a lighter. There we go, there's a lighter. We won't be able to use in the drill. And then just approach the fireplace with the lighter in our hands and then we get the ignite option which pops up like so. There we go. And then if what you've got to do now is you've got to keep an eye on things um, because you don't want them to burn. It's very easy to burn stuff. So make sure you've got space. Let's just drop that. In your back in your inventory to move stuff over and be prepared as well if stuff if the gate if the inventory system glitches out and it doesn't let you put stuff into your hands be prepared to use the hold a on xbox or hold x on playstation and use shoulder buttons to move it directly into your inventory that way or press and hold x on um, xbox or square on playstation to drop the stuff onto the ground um so oh hello is the fire gone out I think our fire just went out. Oh no. It was just, just struggling. There we go. So here we go. So this is cooked now. So let's quickly put that into my, our inventory. And look, that pear is dried already. 
There we go. So let's put that away. Let's keep an eye on this chicken steak. You, what you're looking for is you're looking for it to change colour. So it's still raw. Dum -de -dum -de -dum -de -dum. Now, oh, while we're here as well, what I should have said before is if you start a fire, I um, mean, this works best when you're inside as well. If you've got damp clothing, so you've taken them off and you've wrung the clothing out so that it's not wet anymore. Some things you can't wring out, for example, like... Um, uh, boots or backpacks if you take them off and put them on the floor around a fire they will then dry out pretty quickly they dry out faster when they're on the floor around the fire than if you're wearing them now you can see my, my, my character's getting a bit hot if you look in the bottom right hand corner you see my temperature's gone up to yellow which is which is pretty hot if it goes red you want to move away um, it's getting hot because I'm near the fire but it's also getting hot because I've got these hot things in my uh, in my backpack right I think that chicken's dried now it is, so let's hold that. Let's move away from the fire. And now we have some lovely, so that dried pear will now last longer. You'll get less energy from it when you eat it, but it will last longer. Similarly with these um, these uh, pumpkin slices, and similarly, uh, this fat is cooked, so you want to eat that pretty quick. So let's, let's eat some of this fat. Now, if you look in the bottom right corner, see next to my temperature, I've got the plus sign. That's a little booster, which means that I'll stay warm for a lot longer. So if, it, if you ever have to go outside when the weather's really bad or swim a long distance, make sure you warm yourself up to get that plus sign first. And there we go, that's cooking. We've done, done a fair bit there, haven't we? Right, let's go back outside. So, after cooking, <laughs> another thing you want to know out is how do you navigate at night in the dark? Now, the most obvious thing is torches, isn't it? So if you, for example, um, pick up a flashlight, like I've got a flashlight in my hands now, and then you pick up a battery to go in it. And then if you go to the battery and press Y to equip on Xbox, so it'll be triangle on PlayStation, that'll put it in the, um, in the battery. I don't know whether you can probably, yeah probably just about see it turning on and off it's a bit bright at the moment so so that's an easy way but you know batteries you may want to hang on to them um, what you can also do is you can use glow sticks so if you have a glow stick in your hand and you crack it so here we go uh, let's tap. so you crack it that will then give you a little bit of light but quite a lot you'd be surprised how much light a glow stick gives you road flares as well they're very bright they're very good for seeing where you're going um as you go up into the northwest airfield or down south in livonia if you're lucky enough you'll find night vision scopes and night vision goggles that you can add a battery to and put on you can see where you're going however the one thing that lots of people forget about are the torches they're really easy to make and they last a reasonable amount of time so to make um one of these sort of tiki torchy things you just need a stick and then you need some bandages so if we take the stick to our hands Oh, don't jump on the table. <laughs> so we've got the stick in our hands, and then we, we, I'm just looking at the rag. See, it says craft torch. So we press right trigger, and we will now craft a torch, which is probably on the floor. There we go. So it's on the floor, so we pick that up. So now we've got this torch in our hands. Now, what you can do as well, oh, see if we can get to the fat. If we take the fat, See if it lets us do this. No, it's not gonna let us do this. Okay, you can add things to the torches to make them last longer, but we're not gonna, not gonna. All right, sorry, the torch needs a little bit more fuel, I think. So let's add a little bit more fuel to it. There we go. And now let's add the fat. So you see where it says now upgrade with lard? Um, we needed to put some more um, we need to put some fuel in the in the torch, which was some more bandages. And now I've added the lard to it as well, which means it will last longer. Now, you don't have to do that, um, but it will make it last longer. And then I can just stand in front of the matches, or I could combine it with the lighter from my backpack, or I could use the drill kit, and then we can hold right trigger. And now we have a rather cool torch. And these are really good. Now, remember... To get sticks, you don't. You can just go up to a bush and get a stick. Um, and as long as you've got a knife, you can make rags. Um, and so if you're having to move through the night, you can um, make several of these torches so they, they're good to go. And you can make several sort of drill kits to light them in advance as well. And if you drop them, 
they kind of they'll give you some ambient light as well so got you some options for wandering around now zombies you're going to come across quite a few of these luckily these aren't very aggressive so you know you want to go for the head things like axes are great um dust knuckle dusters are fantastic you can you know any sort of weapon you can carry are, are good for attacking them um just remember so let's pick up these axe so when you've got an axe you press left trigger to kind of aim it and swing it if you press and hold um y it'll, you'll do a big hit oh, that's on um xbox or triangle on uh, playstation you'll do a big hit and aim for the head and with an axe if you hit them in the head with a big hit you can um you can take them out one go just bear in mind that your stamina in the bottom left hand corner is going down fairly fast also, just remember when you're pulling back as well on your left stick and you're blocking, you will not take damage from zombies, um, which is pretty good unless there's lots of them and then they can crowd you and take you down pretty quick. Remember, one zombie is e fairly easy to deal with, two, getting tricky. As soon as you start to get to three or four zombies, they will kill you very, very, very quickly. So just, just bear that in mind. Um, so sometimes you know discretion is the better part of valor and you should run away. However, I just want to show you a little trick. If you've got a sharp um, weapon, like a knife, what you can do is, if you can get behind a zombie stealth-wise, like this, by creeping, you can do a stealth kill on them. So you do something like this. You get, get, get close, and then you stab them, and that will be a stealth kill. Now, it can be tricky because they'll turn around and aggro, but if you can do that, you can take out a number of zombies, and it's a really cool way. Obviously, there's an M16 there. If you can get a gun, guns are great. The big danger with guns, though, is... Um, is noise so if you can put a suppressor on one you know that that's good you will attract zombies from a long a long long way away if you use a gun though so talking of guns let's drop this knife and let's talk about guns now the guns in daisy are brilliant they're really good fun but they take a bit of getting used to because the guns will often have a magazine and you have bullets and you have sights and you've got to put the kind of put it all together so let's start off with the shotgun so this is the bk33 shotgun nice shotgun um but it's got no bullets in it so let's drop that stick let's put that on my shoulder so the first thing we need to do is find some bullets now sometimes bullets are loose or sometimes they're in boxes so let's take this box of bullets shotgun but um uh, shells into our hand and if you look in the bottom left hand corner it says rt to unpack so first thing we've got to do is unpack them once we've unpacked them we can put them into our inventory then we can put our gun in our hands and then i've got to remember if i'm doing this pressing the right button now i think it's x to load press and hold x on xbox or square on playstation to load it no it's not i just dropped it that's not how you do it <laughs> oh dear that's terrible here we go no it's sorry it's press and hold y there you go. Press and hold Y on Xbox or triangle on PlayStation and that will then um, load your gun. And then we're good to go. So shotgun, fairly simple. So let's do a similar thing with the SKS. Now each gun takes its own bullets. Some, 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 I mean, there's some common ones, but so for example, the SKS uh, takes uh, 762 by 39. So let's grab some... 762 by 39 but let's let's unpack the box so we've got some 762 by 39 let's pick up the SKS I've got a scope here as well so that's the scope for the SKS it's the PU scope so if I press Y on Xbox or triangle on PlayStation that will then add the scope so and then when you're looking down the iron sights if you press the left sorry press right on your d stick d pad you'll then get the um sights up and if you press and hold right on your d pad you'll get rid of them so it's tap right on your d pad to look down and then press and hold to go back to the iron sights but we need to put some bullets in it so we just go highlight over the correct bullets press b on xbox that would be circle on playstation to combine them and then dunk it then does that now so we've got one bullet in if we press and hold b actually no we don't need to do that if you press and hold y on xbox or press and hold triangle i think it will just load them up there we go yeah it will, it will load it up until it's full now the sks has an internal magazine 
So we'll do it that way. So if you look in the bottom left hand corner, we've now got 10 bullets, one in the chamber and nine in the internal magazine. So that's good. So let's drop that one. Now let's have a look at a pistol because the pistols work a similar way to sort of the assault rifles and the fact that you have the gun, you have the magazine, you have the attachments. In this case, we've got um, a scope and then you've got the ammunition. So if we take the ammunition into our hand and we unbox it, this is 357. And then we put that into our inventory and then we pick up a mag which is full of bullets. Now, I'm just going to take the bullets out. So if a mag is full of bullets, you can do right tr trigger and you can take it out. Obviously, when you find magazines in the in the game, they'll probably have one or two bullets in. So this now has no bullets in it. So we just go into our inventory, find the correct bullets, press B to combine on Xbox, that would be circle on PlayStation, and then press and hold right trigger and your fella will then load all those bullets into the gun. So we can put that into our inventory. Now if we pick up the gun, this is the deagle, into our hands, and we can now, I think, just press and hold Y on Xbox or triangle on PlayStation, and he's put the magazine in. There we go. So he's good to go. Oh, I should mention, you know, to um, soft aim, you press left trigger, and to aim down sights, you click in your right stick. There we go. Now what we can do is you can also add attachments. If you look below the gun, you'll see we have an option of a sight and a suppressor. So on the table, I've got a um, uh, handgun scope. So let's take that. And was there a suppressor there as well? Can't see it. Okay, so what we can do now is we can go into our inventory and then we can press Y on Xbox. That would be triangle on PlayStation. And we've added the, the scope to the deagle. So that's pretty good. Then we can go and kill some zombies which is nice. Wow, we have covered an awful lot of ground here. Um, I'm going to cover this stuff later, so how you can make little bases and make chests and things. Um, quick look at the NBC gear. So if you want to go into the toxic zones, um, for example, there's one that's happening right down there right now, you need to have um, full NBC gear. So you're going to need a hood, going to need gloves, going to need pants, uh, trousers, going to need a jacket, going to need boots. Um, and you're going to need a gas mask. Um, and if it's gas mask that needs filters, you're going to have to put the filters on. Um, some of the gas masks have integral filters. Remember, the filters normally they last less than 10 minutes, so that's pretty good. If you get yourself ill in the gas, though, you're going to need the uh, antidote, the injector, which you can only find in the static zones, so it's quite difficult. Or you can give yourself a bl your blood transfusion, but I'll cover that in a separate video. Um, and also in separate videos, we will look at. Um, growing stuff and farming as well. So I've got that set up. But what I'm gonna try and do is kind of expand this area so it can be a really good sort of tutorial area to kind of do uh, do nice videos. So there we go. I know this has been a bit long, but hopefully it has been useful. Um, remember, if you've got any questions at all, put them down below and I will use that to drive um, my content in terms of what sort of videos I should be making um, so I can answer your questions. Remember there are no stupid questions either. If you're thinking of a question I guarantee there are hundreds if not thousands of people thinking about the same question. And also with Daisy, because there are no there are very few tool tips telling you what to do um, and the game does change regularly as well you know, YouTube is, is an amazing um, is an amazing resource so if you think oh, how do I do this you know, just do a search on YouTube and all you've got to do, just be careful if it's an old video because things might have changing, but I guarantee there's plenty of videos with tutorials about the sort of stuff you want to do. If you're on console and it's PC stuff, you'll have to translate the controls. They can be a little bit different, but the ideas and concepts are the same because there is parity really now between uh, console and PC in terms of the, the vanilla game, not the modded game, but the vanilla game there is. So there we go. Hopefully you found that useful. If you have it, if you like, if you want to see more of the same, press subscribe. I will, of course, see you again soon.